Hey guys, Ivan here and this video as you can see we're gonna start with some sad news and it is the passing of Gustavo Badel, another one of those 2000 bodybuilders who just passed away from a stroke. I know another death in bodybuilding, way too many deaths, way too many. It's not like Joe Aesthetics who died at the age of 30, that was way too young. Gustavo Badel died at the age of 50, which is also very young. Now again, the cause of that is a stroke and he is one of those 2000 bodybuilders, which is basically when the era of true mass monsters started. Like, yeah, it started with Dorian in 93, but back then there was only Dorian, nobody was that big. Later, with Ronnie Coleman and then Jay Cutler, and uh, when Kevin Levroni and Flex Wheeler and all these guys got big, Nasser El Sambari, uh, this guy was one of those guys, the, the original first mass monster. So during the 2000s, everybody got really freaking big. If you wanted to be competitive in bodybuilding, you had to be a mass monster. There was no way around it. There was no classic physique. There was no man's physique. Bodybuilding was the only route and aesthetics and nice shape wasn't really the most important thing. It wasn't really that much rewarded. Nobody cared about bubble guts at that time. It was all about mass. And, uh, you know, all these bodybuilders were really freaking huge on that Mr. Olympia stage. And now the thing is, some of them had genetics to do this without sacrificing their health too much. The others, not really. I'm not saying that the reason why Gustavo Adel died was necessarily heavy abuse of drugs. I don't know what he was doing, but it got me thinking. Especially after watching new Jay Cutler podcast in which him and Milo Sharchev revealed how much some of these guys were taking, uh, how much Nasser El Sambari was taking, it was absolutely mind-blowing. Then again, there is a whole bunch of people dying from strokes all the time and they aren't professional bodybuilders, they aren't abusing drugs. So maybe it had nothing to do with that, but let's not pretend we all know that the bodybuilding lifestyle is definitely not the healthiest lifestyle out there. I don't think there are that many athletes dying in other sports at uh, such a young age. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, as far as Gustavo Badel's career, you guys probably know that he beat, that he is one of two people who managed to beat Ronnie Coleman before Jay Cutler dethroned him in 2006. Since Ronnie won the Olympia in 1998, he only lost to Gunter Schlierkamp at the, I believe, Arnold Classic Brazil. And uh, he also lost to uh, Gustavo Badel at the 2005 Mr. Olympia, but not really. He didn't place ahead of him in the, in the end, but he beat him in the challenge round. If you guys remember the challenge round, if you don't, if you don't know what happened here, you can check it out. It's on my channel. It's actually on my first homepage of my channel. And I also reposted it today after I heard of Gustavo's passing. It's on my community section. The whole video of that challenge round when Gustavo beat Ronnie. It's a very interesting video. You can check it out. Uh, here is also Gustavo Badel against uh, Gunter Schlierkamp. Both of these guys are right here right now. Both of them beat Ronnie Coleman prior to him losing the Mr. Olympia. It was a very interesting moment. Uh, here you can see Gustavo against Jay and you can see that he's beating Jay. He was really good at picking the poses in which he was very good at and he managed to beat all of these guys including Ronnie Coleman and he won the challenge round very deservedly so and uh, this guy wasn't exactly, isn't exactly one of the most popular names ever but he was battling against Ronnie and Jay. His best placement at the Mr. Olympia was third place actually. And I'm telling you all this because I'm sure there is a lot of you guys who don't even know who he was, especially younger guys, uh, because he wasn't really, he isn't really as popular as some of the guys who placed even worse than him at the Mr. Olympia, like, I don't know, Paul Dillette, like Lee Priest, like a whole bunch of them, Chris Cormier, who were like at the same level or even worse than him uh, as far as Mr. Olympia placement, but were more popular, more outspoken. He was kind of low-key, but once again, he beat Ronnie Coleman in a challenge round and he was third best bodybuilder in the world at one point. So that's about uh, Gustavo Badel. Unfortunately, sadly, he passed away today at the age of 50. May he rest in peace. Alright, next we got a little physique update of Larry Wheels, 
who is supposed to compete in classic physique. I don't know when, I don't really know any details, he didn't really announce anything as far as I know, but he has been posting physique updates, and in this most recent one, he looks pretty damn shredded. As you can see, he looks, he looks pretty lean. Uh, and also, he kind of, um, as far as I know, he's completely, he's not really completely natural, but he's on TRT. He's on a very small dose of tests, so he's not really blasting gear like he used to back in the day. So considering that, he looks amazing. What he changed about his approach is the training. Before he was training as a power lifter, he was doing a little bit of bodybuilding work here and there, but not really. He mainly focused on heavy, heavy lifts. Now he's doing the bodybuilding training. So if he was doing bodybuilding training when he was blasting gear, he would have been much, much bigger. Even though he was around 300 pounds at one point, uh, very, very lean as well, a little bit watery, a little bit puffy, but lean. Uh, for his height, he probably would have been, I don't know, 350 with much better shape if he was doing bodybuilding. But he wasn't. He wasn't doing the hypertrophy training. All the growth that happened, happened. I mean, sort of accidentally, <laughs> I mean, not really lifting weights will get you big, even if you're doing low rep ranges, but it's not optimal for muscle growth, and still he grew, and now that he's off of all the gear, he can't be as strong as he once was, but he can focus on improving his physique, and he definitely did improve it, and also with the posing, and uh, I'm sure without a lot of gear, he's healthier, and he's probably eating uh, better, so his stomach, his midsection looks better, uh, you can also see his uh, vacuum is very good. The biggest issue with his physique right here is obviously his wheels. Even though that's his name, his wheels, his legs are not very good. It's also the angle. I mean, if this photo was taken from a lower angle, his legs would look a little bit bigger and better, but not that much. He definitely doesn't have the biggest legs. He never really had big legs. Uh, but, I mean, can he improve them? I don't know. I'm sure he can. I don't know how hard he's training the legs. But uh, as far as upper body, it's really freaking impressive. Now, as far as the aesthetics and uh, the classic shape, can he win a pro card looking like this? Honestly, if he improved those legs, if he got those legs a little bit bigger, maybe it's a possibility. I mean, there is so many pro qualifiers out there and there are so many pro classic physique athletes out there that I don't think it's impossible. Like, it's not like, I don't know, back in the 90s trying to win a pro card in open bodybuilding. That was uh, basically mission impossible. Um, but uh, only a select few were able to do that. But now it's different. Now you can win a pro card. You just need to pick your own division and pick a, a show where competition isn't that that horrible, that, that strong. And uh, yeah, I'm sure, I'm not sure, but I think he has a chance. But we'll see how he's gonna do if he does the show. I don't know any dates. I don't think he announced anything. But as soon as he does, I will make a video about it. And as soon as he does the show, I will make a video about that as well. So guys, stay tuned and subscribe to this channel. Who we know is competing for sure is John Jewett. And as you can see right here, this is him at six days out of Atlanta Pro. He wasn't originally supposed to compete at Atlanta Pro. I think he was prepping for, I think, Chicago. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I know he wasn't prepping for Atlanta originally. However, he got in shape faster than he anticipated and he decided to jump in. Atlanta is happening this weekend, I believe it's on Sunday, uh, at the same weekend when Vancouver Pro is happening, but the other day, I believe. And there is no open division, there is only 212. Now, I was hoping John Jewett is going to make a transition and actually compete in the open as he originally uh, planned to do, but uh, his weight went down and he can make it a 212, so he's going to be still doing the 212. Uh, this guy, I believe he placed third or fourth at the Mr. Olympia in 212 once. He won multiple 212 shows. He's one of the top 212 guys and he could be like the guy pushing Sean Clarida at the Mr. Olympia this year. I checked the list of Atlanta Pro and there are no other popular known 212 names so i think it's gonna be an easy qualification for him uh, as you can see he's shredded man he's shredded now i'm sure a lot of you guys know who john jewett is because he's like the leading authority on uh, educating people on bodybuilding like he is a scientist and also he has a lot of experience and he has results and I was watching him, I was following this entire off-season and the, the entire prep, 
and I was watching him progress in the offseason, and when he started dieting, like, it didn't seem like he was gonna get shredded so fast, but obviously the guy knows what he's doing, this video is actually more recent, it's like from yesterday, so as you can see, he already looks more shredded, and once he gets completely dehydrated in the end, like, that's gonna be crazy conditioning, so I can't wait to see his final package on stage, it's gonna be insane, and um, yeah, I hope he's gonna do another pro show uh, in the open division, at least. Just to show up, just to just to just to just to see him how he looks next to the other open guys because I believe he can fare well against them with this freaking conditioning and with this much muscle. Like, yeah, he might be weighing only two hundred and twelve pounds, but like he has the shape, he has the the structure, he has the muscle bellies. He's very complete. I mean, find a freaking flaw. I mean, he's not perfect, but he's very, very good, he's very good, especially now that he took uh, an entire year off and focused on improvements, he really did improve his physique, it's just really freaking impressive, I gotta say, I mean, this guy can do really well in the open bodybuilding as well, I can't wait to see him hit that stage. And finally, we got uh, this uh, video of Hari Chopin posing that he posted on his story. Um, yeah, I believe this is uh, from now, I mean, he looks very lean, but... I think this is his usual conditioning at this point in the year, uh, I don't see why this would be old, I don't think he would post it just like out of blue and not say anything that this is old, so I believe it, he doesn't really specify that this is right now, but it looks to me like this is recent, and um, if it is recent, let's analyze it, well basically what I see right here is like good old Hadi, I don't think he improved or gotten worse, Surprisingly, he's actually only 35 years old, he's gonna be 36 uh, at the Mr. Olympia this year, uh, so he's definitely like a young bodybuilder, I mean, you don't expect uh, from somebody who is only 35, 36 to just start fading away at that age, no, uh, I don't think he's gonna fade away, I think he's gonna maybe even get better or look the same, so it's definitely gonna be a challenge beating him this year. Uh, for Derek, for Nick, for Samson, for anybody who wants that title, so we can expect at least the same or better Hari Japan this year at the Mr. Olympia, I think it only, I think it mainly depends on how he peaks, and that's about it, because he hasn't been pretty much very similar for the past, like, four or five years since we know about him, since he moved to the Open, because his physique is really pretty much maxed out, like, he doesn't really need to add any more muscle anywhere, I don't think he can, really, so it's all about how conditioned he is and how full he is, and what kind of combination he brings to the stage, uh, last year he was fuller, not super conditioned, uh, the year before he was more crispy but less full, uh, I think fullness route is the one he should go with, it looks, it makes him look super impressive, I don't think he needs to get super crispy, uh, he was super full last year without crazy separation everywhere and it looked freaking phenomenal, nobody was able to beat him and I think he should go with the same thing again, but his coach Hani Rambod knows exactly what he's doing, knows exactly what he needs to do in order to bring the best out of Hadi, uh, a lot of people are saying that this was uh, one-off, that he's not gonna win another Mr. Olympia, everybody's looking at Derek and Samson and Nick and the other guys to win the next Mr. Olympia 2023, but as long as Hadi brings his best, like as long as he brings the same thing he brought last year, he's going to be tough to beat, man, I don't think it was close last year between him and Derek, I think it was a very convincing win, and, and of course, Derek is gonna be better, Samson is gonna be better, Nick is going to be better, so it's gonna be definitely a really good battle, because all of these guys are gonna be really good, and it's gonna be very close, but maybe we shouldn't sign this guy off, maybe he's gonna win the Mr. Olympia this year, maybe he's gonna win another one, maybe he's gonna win another five Mr. Olympias, it's not excluded from the conversation, it's very possible, actually. But, whatever you guys think, you can tell me down below in the comment section, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, for more bodybuilding stuff like this, subscribe to this channel, and if you want to support me in this channel, there is the link down below that will lead you to the Old School Labs website, you can try some of the supplements out, and if you use the code EVEN, you get a 15% discount, and you help me out as well, so guys, thank you so much, all the best, and bye-bye.